Welcome to Electron Line, and in this video we're going to try and establish the forces on a current loop inside of magnetic field. Now this current loop, it's a continuous line, and I guess I should make sure it's continuous right there. Okay, with current flowing around it in this direction, this is the plane about which it's rotating, and you can see that this portion of the loop is above the plane, this portion of the loop is below the plane, kind of gives you some perspective. And then we have the B field directly out of the plane, perpendicular to the plane. So it's kind of difficult to draw, but I'm trying my best here. What we're going to try and do here is establish the forces on the four sides, I should say, the four sides of this loop. And so let's start with this side over here. We have a current flowing in this direction, the B field coming out of the plane so the force will be in this direction so let's just indicate that force in this direction Oop. Ooh, what happened to my pen my pen no longer writes I need another red pen <laughs> okay got a good pen now and so the force is in this direction and to establish the size of the force and now let me give you the dimensions of the loop let's say that the length here is equal to a and the length in this direction is equal to B so B is this length and A is this like that gives us kind of a feel for it, all right? So the force on a line of uh, charge is equal to the current through the line times the length of the line. In this case, that would be uh, the length of the line, okay, that would be equal to A, and then it would be times the strength of the magnetic field B. So IAB would be the force in this direction. That would be the magnitude of the force. Now, how about over here on this side of the loop, that's below the plane. Okay, we can see that the current, I have to use my right hand, so the current is going this direction, and the B field is off the plane, so the force would be in this direction, directing the thumb. Okay, that would be in this direction, and so let's call this F1, and let's call this F2, and in this case, if I call this F1, then F2, the magnitude of F2 would also be the current to the loop I, times the length, that would be A, times B. Now notice that those two forces are in opposite directions. They do uh, cause a torque, but from a force perspective, they're equal in opposite directions. They will cancel each other out. So F1 cancels out F2, so there's no net force in this direction. How about the two sides? Now that's a little bit more tricky because it's at an angle. So here, imagine the current is going in this direction. The B field is out of the plane this way. So the force would be in this direction right here. So we have a force in this direction. Let's call it F3. Now, what would be the magnitude of that force? Well, that's a little bit more difficult because notice that the, the magnitude of force would be equal to the length times the B field. and It would be the cross product between those two. So let's try that here. So imagine we have the current going in this direction and the B field going in this direction. So the B field would be straight up the current would be in this direction. So you could say here that the force would be equal to I, this, the magnitude of current, times the length cross B. And of course, that would be a vector quantity. So that's the way we look at it. Now notice that the difference in the angle between the direction of the current and the direction of the B field at this angle right here, which let's call it phi for a moment. So therefore, we know that the magnitude of that force would be equal to F would be equal to I times L times B times the sine of the angle between them. Oh, and it's not theta, because I had the angle phi there, so it would be the angle phi. So that would be the magnitude of force on this line right there. Now, the sine of phi, how do we, how do we relate phi to theta? Because essentially, I want to know that relative to the angle uh, from the plane. So we know that uh, phi is equal to 90 degrees minus theta, so we can say that F, therefore, is equal to I L B times the sine of 90 degrees minus theta, and of course, the sine of 90 minus theta is the same as the cosine of theta, so finally, we can say that the force there is equal to I L B times the cosine of theta relative to the angle of theta there, the difference between the direction of the current and the direction of the plane. Now the length here, of course, would be the side, which is equal to B. So essentially, we can say that this is equal to I, B, big B, times the cosine of theta, B being the length of the side of the loop there. And that would be the magnitude. So now we can say that F3 
is equal to I B B times the cosine of theta. And finally, we want to know what the direction is of the force there and the magnitude on the other side. Notice the current goes in this direction. The B field curls up from the plane. And so therefore my thumb sticking in that direction, that would be the direction of the force. Let's call it force four. And then the magnitude would be the same as for three. F four would be equal to I B big B times the cosine of theta. And notice that those two forces are also in opposite directions, equal in magnitude, opposite directions, so they cancel each other out. So it turns out the total force, the net force, on a current loop inside a magnetic field is always going to be zero because on opposing sides, the force will be in opposite directions, opposite directions here. And even though the magnitude of F3 and F4 will change throughout the cycle if the loop turns around like this, as is indicated here, notice as the angle changes, it will go from a maximum to zero, back to maximum, back to zero. And you can see that the result is that you always have what we call uh, opposing forces equal in magnitude canceling each other out. So the answer is F net is equal to zero on a current loop. And this is why. And that's how we do that.